Gear Patrol calls their new dive watch the best sub $500 dive watch. Full stop. Men's Health rated them as the most stylish solar watch in the game. Who are we talking about? It's movement. They're leveling up your gift giving with the sleekest watches you can buy and the biggest deals of the season. From their innovative ceramic materials to sexy automatic divers, from ultra thin dress watches to solar powered statement pieces and everything in between, movement is making sure you're the good gifter this year for your family, your friends, or for yourself. And now you can take advantage of 30 to 50% off Movement's California clean watches, jewelry, and accessories to get them a gift they'll never forget. With fast free shipping and returns and amazing bang for your buck, Movement makes for a relaxed shopping experience. And with one-size-fits-all watches, it's an easy, elegant gifting experience too. Shop 30 to 50% off now at MVMT.com. That's M-V-M-T. Dot com. Okay, I was freaking out a second ago because I was trying to whistle, but no sound was coming out. Like, it wasn't working. And I was like, can I not whistle anymore? <laughs> I can. I'm not very good. You can. And you know what? I think I just realized that the reason I'm not very good at whistling is because my bottom teeth are crooked. Because you press your tongue up against your bottom teeth, don't you? Uh-uh. No. Huh? Mine, mine's like whistle? gone out of my mouth. Yeah, my tongue's not Mine there. just kind of floats in the middle. Well, do you, what, do you just blow? Like, what? Yeah, you, your tongue's not involved. <laughs> what? This You're is, telling me that you guys the... don't use your tongues? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> so it's quite a big whistle hole you got there. <laughs> Are you... You need to slim it down a little bit. <laughs> <gasps> oh, look at that. <laughs> Remember that episode where Becca learned to whistle without using her tongue? <laughs> hey guys, welcome back to the Potted Together podcast. I'm Nicole and I am joined by my lovely co host Adam and Becky, who just learned to whistle. Hello. <laughs> That's how I'm introducing myself. I don't know myself. how much I don't know how much of that fiasco will make it into the episode. I feel like so a lot of it. So something. I feel like head over to Instagram and let us know if you whistle with your tongue or not. <laughs> yeah, cuz it's that's interesting to me. Who taught you how to whistle? That's that's the question. <laughs> um I don't I think I just taught myself like growing up as an only child for a while, I taught myself how to do a lot of things, including the hand thing that Spock does. Oh, I can't do that. I cannot. Here's oh, you how you can't. do it. Here's how you do it, Adam. I can't really do it very well with this hand, my left hand, but all you have to do is tie rubber bands around your fingers and just hold <laughs> it there, and it, your muscles will remember. Muscle memory. That's how I taught myself really? to do it. Yeah, because I wanted really? to do it so bad. I was like, I have to do this, so I tied... You know, rubber bands, like hair ties. That makes my nerd heart so happy that you were like, I have to do this. <laughs> <laughs> I was a Trekkie from day one, you know? <laughs> just kidding. I don't know anything about Star Trek. I don't know why I felt like I needed to do that. Okay, just stop talking. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, so today we're going to be talking about the times that we've given people bad plant advice, which I'm really excited to hear what yours are. But before we get into that, let's catch up. Adam, how was your week? Um, it was good. I know that like, okay, we're officially now, we all are officially in 2022, the past two episodes we've been posing, but um, <laughs> Yeah, it was good. I started off 2022 with uh, that little Harry Potter party that we talked about last episode. And that yeah, was... Yeah, how was it? It was really fun. And I really enjoyed the reunion special. I got a little misty-eyed a couple times. Um, but yeah, so that's that That was a Harry Potter thing. I Okay, the reason it means a lot to me is because I got into reading Harry Potter when I was like r- going to be a freshman in college. It was like the summer before I went to college. And I had no idea what to expect. I grew up in a town of a thousand people. And I think I probably said this before, but 
I started reading the books. I was like, this is what college is going to be like, which it definitely was <laughs> not. But <laughs> <laughs> I mean, more like Azkaban. But um, yeah, it just and my sister got me into it. So it's just like sentimental to me. And uh, yeah, so the reunion special was really good. And then I've just kind of been relaxing, you know, watching my TV and such. Any new shows? Oh, yeah, our TV shows. Um, there was this show on Paramount Plus by RuPaul, because apparently RuPaul does all of the shows, but it was called Queen of the Universe, and mm. it was a drag queen singing competition, and I really enjoyed it, because it, like, it was like Drag Race mixed with American Idol, um, but... It was their first season, and I feel like it just went so quickly. I think they only had, like, six episodes, because usually you have to, like, pitch it to a network and then all that stuff. So I hope it comes back again, but it was really enjoyable to watch. Cool. And then um, Queer Eye came out, so I binged oh, literally yeah. every single episode of the new season. Ooh, I haven't Cried watched it yet. almost every episode. <laughs> just so emotional. And... Uh, <laughs> And then I just started a new show last night on Netflix called Stay Close, which is like a drama thriller show. And I'm really jazzed about that. But that's that's basically Mm. it. Oh, and I'm watching the Sex and the City revival, even though I've never seen any of the other episodes of Sex and the City. (laughs) Wait, why did did I always think? (laughs) Why did I always think that you'd be a Sex and the City person? Like I... Yeah, because I'm d- gay. I would not have guessed that. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> um, but oh my god, you've never watched Sex in the City? It's so good. No, yeah, I've never seen any of the other episodes. I mean, I maybe sporadically saw them when I was younger. I remember an episode where there was some hand action going on. It was a class on teaching people to use their hands to. Uh, Mm-hmm. pleasure someone and I remember something hitting someone's face but when I was younger I was like I don't know what that means <laughs> it was a good show to binge in your 20s yeah it was a really good show to binge like in your 20s do you watch Sex in the City Becca nope the resident Dang. as the resident person in their 20s never seen it <laughs> um, I've thought about it though like it seems like one of those like long standing shows that you could finish like over Maybe a year, a couple months. I, Take you a while. I really think that you would enjoy it. I think that you'd like it. But mm. yeah, I too am watching the revival, whatever. It's really good. I think it's really good so far. Sarah Jessica Parker is the one who created it, and she's doing a pretty good job with the storyline, I think. So, yeah. So, Becca, how was your week? Um, let's see. Well, it's the first official week back to work. Mm -hmm. and how was your vacation oh it was so nice did it go by too fast though yeah it did go by too fast like once Mm -hmm. i actually got into vacation mode it was already halfway over it just took so long to turn my brain off like i was still Mm -hmm. kind of working you know even though i took time off but yeah it was so good and it was kind of hard to get back into work but at the same time i was really happy because you know I like making videos and everything, but yeah, basically the whole time I just like watched TV and <laughs> laid on the couch and like did some sewing, uh, stuff like that. I actually made a video for my second channel. It's like a fly on the wall vlog. So it's just, I don't talk at all. It's just me like doing things. Oh, so, that's cool. Yeah. With like, I like did it like a movie score so i don't know i That's just figured cool. my second channel is like so tiny that it really doesn't matter if no one watches the videos so i just kind of do what i want so i love that anyway wait is it out yet um it'll be out by the time this podcast goes up okay yeah so anyway that's yeah that's basically what my break was like just lounging and then this week i've been sort of scheduling out my month. I have lots of stuff to do this month and it's just been nice. And it has been cold. We have not talked about the weather in a while. Um, (laughs) It has been so cold. I think it's like 13 degrees right now. And like the low tomorrow, the next day is like eight and six, which is just so, it's still so weird to me 
that <laughs> like that the weather could be a single digit like i'm like oh yeah the high today is like six i'm like what <laughs> not the high the low <laughs> the low today is six just six it's just so weird <laughs> like i just anyway so yeah and we've been pumping the fire you know we have our wood stove it's so cozy and honestly it heats our house like the only time our heat system ever kicks on is maybe like around like 3 a.m until 7 until we can start the fire again so that's really nice like we're definitely hopefully saving a lot of money Mm -hmm. yeah i would imagine you are for sure i really hope (laughs) yeah because our energy consumption around this time of year is astronomical because of the heater so and we we've like replaced parts in our stove to make it more efficient so it's do it's doing really well like we have not burned through that much wood and we've been we've been having it going like almost constantly so that's good news not to mention though like electricity too like i feel like we use so much electricity this time of the year because it gets dark so early yeah oh my gosh so true yeah i pretty much never had lights on in the summertime well besides this light behind me it's led though so Mm -hmm. yeah Uh, but yeah the winter is so dark but honestly i don't know if you've noticed nicole this winter has not been that dark comparatively no not yet yeah don't say that it hasn't (laughs) sorry (laughs) um i feel like just trying to keep it real last year from october until march we just did not see the sun more than like three times it was a dark year last year. It was in so dark. more ways than one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was really dark. Um, and, like, I've seen the sun a couple times a week, you know, since October. Mm-hmm. So that's really good. So when it is a cloudy day, yeah. I'm kind of like, oh, this is cozy. I like it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But. We also haven't gotten a lot of snow. Like, we got, I know we got more snow than you got. You just got, like, a dusting last week. But we haven't had as much snow as we usually get this time of the year so i feel like that has a lot to do with it because those snow clouds are just so thick and Mm -hmm. they hang around for a long time you know yeah that's so true yeah yeah so weather aside i took down christmas which was a nice feeling i love taking down christmas you know i love putting it up but i love taking it down yeah i love when my house just feels fresh and clean Mm mm-hmm I just don't like the clutter after a while, so I'm glad that it's gone. Uh, My tree Mm -hmm. is still up because it's still alive. Like one of the I was just gonna ask about the tree. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, one of the things of being a plant person is my tree does not die usually because I water it. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Like it's shedding a bit, so I know it's dying, but it's still very happy. So I feel really guilty just throwing it out in in the elements. Because it's so beautiful. It's my favorite Christmas tree we've ever had, you know, so. It's cute. I'm surprised that it doesn't die quicker, though, with you using the heater as much as you're using. Like, it's not drying it out. Yeah, I think, well, yeah, it is maybe like 12 feet away from it, maybe 15 feet away from it. Mm -hmm. But the air is dry. It's like 20% humidity in my house, which is so bad. Oh, my gosh. What if you clipped a little sprig and then put it in like a shadow box and you have like Christmas 2021 and you have like <gasps> this wall of like a li- all your Christmas trees? <gasps> that is such a good idea. Will the sprig Would that live? Work? Maybe yeah, if I, I pressed don't know about it. That. Press it. Yeah, maybe if I press put that it. press kit you got. Yeah. From that cool person. <laughs> from that really cool person. Oh my gosh, speaking of that, I did <laughs> press some flowers this last year, but I think. I noticed that as the seasons roll through, there's different wildflowers that pop up each season. So mm-hmm. I kind of want to pick, uh, and there's a ton of wildflowers around me, so don't worry. But I kind of want to like pick a few each month and press them and make like a display, you know, because each that would be really cute. Yeah. Each month that has them, like not every month has flowers, obviously, but like a leaf for October, you know, a sprig of cedar yeah. for November or whatever. I thought that would be fun. That would be cool. That would be cool. One, because it's like your first house that you own. And two, like if you move somewhere different, you can like take a little bit of Missouri with you. You Mm -hmm. know? Exactly. That's a cute idea. Yeah. I think I'm going to do that this year. But I did have a Viticii leaf die 
and I'm going to press that one and I'm super Are you? excited. Ooh. Yeah, cuz it's flat. It's like perfect for pressing. So, yeah, I'm yeah. excited. Well, I already did press it. It's already like in a book. It it was too big for the press that you gave me, but it's in a book. <laughs> <laughs> it's in a book, yeah. Um, but what else? I was going to say something else. I think that's all. Shows? That's pretty much. What shows are you oh. watching? Oh, what shows are you watching? Yeah. Okay. Cobra Kai season four came out. I knew you were going to be watching it. When I saw like <laughs> the press rounds, I was like, I bet Becca's watching Cobra Kai. <laughs> I love it. Like so much of that show is just so cute. Like Cobra, like, okay, Karate Kid. I hadn't watched it until last year and Karate Kid, or maybe it was two years ago. But anyway, it messed me up in the best way because <laughs> it's just such a beautiful story of father figures just stepping up for no reason other than like there was a need and i just think that's beautiful number one and mr miyagi is perfect in my eyes he has no flaws i love this man like i think about him all the time and anyway did you watch the did you watch the the old one the original one or the new one with jaden smith oh i didn't realize that there was a new one i totally forgot you're right. Oh, so you watched the old one? The yeah, yeah, I watched the original. Well, no. They're both great. Okay, They're okay. both really good. I'll have yeah. to watch the new one then. I totally forgot that that was a thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a good one. You should watch it. It's good. Okay, yeah. So I watched the originals, and we watched episode three, or like version three, the one where uh, he opens the bonsai store. It's just really cute. I wish we w- could have seen as a plant person. I'm like, I wanted to know more about the bonsai. Like every time we talked about it, I was like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, what else? Like, how can I do it? Anyway, so karate, not karate kid, Cobra Kai, so good. It's just so sweet. Although as I'm watching it, I'm realizing that there's only like two young girls in the entire show. And season one, there was a lot of girls in it. And now there's only two. And the two girls hmm. are like caricatures of women you know what I mean and not in a good way it's like one Mm -hmm. of them is like really aggressive and like has had a really hard life and the other one has had a really good life and she is like kind of prissy it's like can't we get representation of girls being friends you know what I mean it just kind of was like that kind of sucks (laughs) that this is how they're portraying girls in the show now Mm -hmm. um it's like not a lot of girl support girls sort of action so I hope that it evolves and they become friends or something but Anyway, what else am I watching? I don't know. Oh, wait. Okay, okay. Last thing. Last thing. Marrying Millions. It's a really bad reality show on Hulu. (laughs) But like, wait, I think I saw previews for this. Yeah, it's like, okay, there's bad reality that I cannot watch, like Temptation Island. Like, that's just so bad. It's so dumb. But then there's Marrying Millions and 90 Day Fiance and things like that, where I'm like, (laughs) hell yeah, let's do this. I love it. So Marrying Millions is just really good and really cringy. And just honestly, like there's some, I mean, I I believe that a lot of the couples are real. There's definitely some where I'm like, okay, this is not real. There's this one who, like the man, like I researched him a little bit. And like, there's like so many articles saying that he's, gay but he's posing as straight for the show like for clout and like Mm. when i when he came up listen i to me i was like oh they're gonna have like a gay couple on this show like oh that's great and then he's like and my fiance blah 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 and like he said her name i'm like huh (laughs) like wait 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 wait. he's straight um which like you can't look at somebody and know if they're gay or not but just i don't know yeah i don't know and then i was i looked it up and yeah a ton of people said that he's a gay man pretending to be straight for this reality show what the heck that's unfortunate yeah i'm like come on they could have i don't know could have had representation or whatever but regardless i was it's just a funny show it's just great like there's just lots of What's the premise of it? They're marrying into, like, people that have money? Yeah, basically. Okay, so it's just, like, a bunch of different types of couples. So you've got, like, couples who are around the same age. You have the typical young girl, older dude. There's also an older woman, younger dude. They're, like, only 10 years apart, though, so it's not, like, that weird. And then 
Um, what else is there? And then there's like young couples where like the young person came into money. Like they like built this like really successful business and like their girlfriend is also around their age. Um, and then there's this really amazing wealthy woman who I think she's like in her late forties and she's like trying to date, but she also wants kids and like, it's just a whole thing. And she's so beautiful and perfect and I love her and it's just (laughs) not working out for her for some reason. So anyway, that's like the, and basically it just shows like what their relationship is like. And it's not necessarily Mm. them going to like dating to marriage. It's just them dating their boyfriend and girlfriend. Some of them are talking about marriage, but it's mostly just like their lives. Yeah. Sounds like my jam. I mean, Selling Sunset. I love that show, but it's so awful. But I still love it. Uh, this last season I, was bad. I, it was hard for me to watch it. It was so about Christine. Like, yeah. You know what I mean? Every every conversation was about Christine. Yeah. What is Selling Sunset about? Is she's a realtor? Yeah, it's a realtor group, the Oppenheim group. And it's just a bunch of mostly blonde women trying to sell houses. Like in Hollywood? million million dollar in yeah. LA, yeah, like that area. Yeah. Okay, Cal- California. Okay, yeah, I saw a preview for it and they really hyped it up, and I was like, "Oh, this looks good." I like shows like that too, mm-hmm. but I have a hard time with reality shows. Really, I really, I do. It's the only reality TV show I watch that I've been watching faithfully is Sister Wives, and I don't know <laughs> why. <laughs> I've never and seen it's it. F- is that about I, the people that are in Flagstaff? That like, yes, okay. they they live in Flagstaff. Yeah, they're in Flag now. Yeah, they moved but from they're from Utah. Utah to Flag. Wait, yeah. Well, they went they were from Utah the law or something like. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but they're so anti Warren Jeffs. So I feel like this is like the first family to come out from that whole Warren Jeffs era. What Do you is, know about Warren Jeffs? No. no. What is that? He's like the leader of the FDLS or FLS. I don't I don't know a lot about it, so I don't want him to speak, oh, but he's like the leader of it. Fundamentalist. He has like yes. He yeah. has like 50 wives, tons of kids, yeah. but he's like child rapist. Okay. You know, he's in jail. He's in jail now. But like when people hear about Mormons, they that right away in like plural marriage, they think of Warren Jeffs because he pretty much was the leader of a huge group of them right. in Utah. But um I've been watching it for years and I've and I Jay sat down and watched an episode with me one day. He must have just walked into the room and like got sucked in. And he's been watching it with me ever since. So like we watch it together. <laughs> Cause he also doesn't like reality oh TV, gosh. but is he still married to all of the wives? Because I I found this TikTok account that was like sort of talking about all the relationships and like apparently shit really hit the fan when he married Robin, like yeah. the young yeah. one. That's so funny because guy. I I found some tea about that show on TikTok too. Like the one lady was like leaving or something and yes, yeah. Yeah. I wonder if we saw the same person. <laughs> it's great. There's so much drama, but also like I don't know why I'm so like interested in their relationship like their their relationship like the whole dynamic is just it interests me like i'm i'm not about that life but i'm curious to know about that life yeah (laughs) you know um yeah he's still with all four wives but they all have very big issues and right now they're going through this covid spurt where like half the family because he has like 18 kids so like half the family is being protective wearing masks blah 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 and the other half is just like i'm gonna travel and i don't care and he's having a hard time like seeing his wives because he's worried that like he's got some kids that are like immunocompromised Mm -hmm. it's it's crazy it's gotten really good i like it a lot (laughs) and i've tried to watch like other reality tv but i just can't do it like i just can't get into it i'm just invested in this family apparently i don't know that is just so wild. I honestly don't know how that man was able to marry four women. I just don't get it. Because even back in the day, I was like, what? This I guy? Know. I know. He's not even Same. like funny. Like, it's not all about looks. Although I don't think he's very handsome. But it's not all about looks. Like, I don't even think his personality is that great either. I just don't get it. No, he's kind of blah. Yeah, yeah he's very yeah, blah. Just like a 
classic white guy, like not <laughs> no personality, <laughs> thinks ketchup is spicy kind of guy. Like. Wait, but does, isn't he the guy that kind of looks like the lead singer of Nickelback? <laughs> uh, he's got like yeah, blonde curly hair. A little bit, yeah. Okay. He's got it's, curly hair. His hair is like it's curly, but he doesn't know how to do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's, it's either like perm frizzy. curly or frizzy. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So there's that. That's I guess hilarious. I'm just going to talk about shows I'm watching because my my week. Were you done talking about your week? I'm sorry. Yeah, I've talked for a very long time, as per <laughs> usual. A chatty girl. Sorry. No, you didn't. No, I don't think you did. Either. Um, I didn't. Not much has happened this past week because I've also been on vacation. <laughs> I'm on vacation for one more week, and I've been really into puzzles. Like I've been doing puzzles nonstop. It's so therapeutic. Like I've always liked puzzles, but I got one for Christmas, and I was like, yes, something to do, you know. Um, so I've been doing that. But I did see, as far as like TV shows go, Cheer Two is coming out, and it looks like it's filled with drama. So I'm. That's a reality show, right? Yeah, that is. Okay, so you guys got me into that. I watched the first season. Are they going to address the Jerry situation? It's all about the Jerry situation, well, I apparently. Yeah, I, don't, I think that it was filming while that all went down. Oh, honestly, that like, is that's... the craziest thing. It doesn't... Yeah, like... Like, I don't want to say it doesn't surprise me, but I'm sure... You know what I mean? It doesn't really all that much. Yeah, I'm. I'm excited about that. So, okay, yay. That's another reality show. Then I started um, Dr. Death. Did you watch Dr. Death? No. Ooh, is this like a documentary? It was a documentary. It was also a 2020 special. Thank you very much. (laughs) Um, But it's about this doctor who pretty much has his medical, you know, license or whatever for to be a neurosurgeon. But he does like back surgery anyway it was a documentary he like botched a lot of surgeries he was a horrible surgeon Mm -hmm. and they kept him on the board and like in hospitals for way longer than they should have but they came out with a tv show it's on peacock um joshua jackson plays him oh percy Mm. percy (laughs) and um alec baldwin and christian slater are in it too it's really good me and my mom watched the first two episodes last night and i was like okay i'm hooked yeah Mm, honestly i gotta be when you say 2020 special like i was triggered because like now it just in my head it's the year like (laughs) the awful year yeah but yes (laughs) yeah (laughs) you mean the tv show 2020 that sounds interesting it's really good you should you should check it out are you watching it on i'm sorry peacock peacock okay is it Mm -hmm. free on peacock i just discovered that you can watch free stuff on like peacock and what else there's another one there's like all all the streaming services like some of them will offer like free stuff too yeah i don't know i'm not sure if it's free but i'll give you my login information we i I think it's like four bucks a month i have some too because there was a tv show that tina fey did called girls five eva and it is so funny and it's on peacock yeah yeah it's got Sarah Bareilles in it. It's got really? a lot of like good people in it. Yeah, it's so funny. Yeah, you should check it out. It's really, it's a good show. For right now, it's good. They're just kind of like getting into it, you know? Yeah. Um, what else did I watch? Oh, we just finished, just finished Yellowstone season four. I keep hearing about that. Okay, listen, if you are not a Yellowstone, if you're not a Yellowstone fan, I don't care if you're not into cowboys or country or horses. This is a phenomenal show. Phenomenal. Kelly Riley is just bay. She's bay all day. Wait, so how many seasons of the show are out? Four. Four. I got a lot of catching up to do. I keep hearing about how good it is. I really do. Everyone keeps talking about it. Yeah, it's so good. It's it's a drama, but it's it's just so good. Kevin Costner pretty much plays this just rant. He's a ranch owner, and it's just a lot of like a lot of drama, a lot of killing. Like pretty much the the state is trying to take over his land, and that's like what the show is is based around. But it's just so so good. So much drama. I love it. 
But the actors are great. Like all the actors, I'm so invested in this show. It's really good. You got you got to watch it. That's on Peacock as well. Is Kevin Costner like really hot? I mean, he's known. I don't think so, but he's known for like he was back in the day. Okay, so he's like heartthrob guy. I just yeah, remember oh, him yeah, from the Bodyguard. Sure. Bodyguard, yeah. Which I just watched that the other day, too, with Jay, because he's never seen it. And I was like, how are you a human at this age in life and you've never seen The Bodyguard? And you're a Whitney Houston fan. <laughs> I'm not talking about you, Becca. We all know that. <laughs> she, you have she some, did, you she have some time to catch up. She did by saying at this age in life. You know, I did. So. <laughs> I did. Fair, fair, fair. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think I want to watch Yellowstone maybe next. Wait, yeah, did you guys you watch Witcher? You guys into no, Witcher? but I keep hearing about that one too. I do, but oh. I don't think that's a show that I'd be into. What? Okay, what is it about? Well, it's fantasy for sure. So yeah. it's Based about this guy. Game. Yeah, and there's a book too, so it's just like everything. But it's about this guy who is a Witcher, which is basically a person who. And again, if anybody out there is a Witcher police, like please just I'm I'm dumbing it down for myself because I. <laughs> I understand it at a basic level, but it's about this dude who's a witcher, which is basically like a monster killer, monster hunter, Mm -hmm. and they're trained from like a young age to be these things, and his job is just to train or to hunt down monsters and kill them, and there's like this other character who becomes like a witch basically and then there's a little bit of romance and they're all trying to get to this one girl who's a princess who is apparently very powerful um and she's like still learning to like use her powers she's like just figured this out that she even has powers all this stuff i'm trying not to spoil anything but that's essentially the premise (laughs) not a very good premise but it's good i mean it's definitely something you have to like focus while watching you can't just yeah. not like easy watching but it's good like we, we watched season two in like two days so okay yeah it's really good i'm gonna have to add that to my list too yeah i'll have to give it yeah. a try that's on it netflix has, right yeah and it has henry canville or whatever his name is henry whatever Cavill. superman swoon oh oh god <laughs> like dan was like so you want to watch it i was like yeah I want to watch it. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. I want to watch it. And, he, and like he just looks so good with the blonde hair. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> wow, very good. I just like have been so into fantasy lately, and like anytime there's like a hot fantasy character, I'm like, hell yeah. <laughs> See, that's another thing that like I don't I don't watch fantasy, which is probably why I have yet to watch Harry Potter or read the books. No. I have to. I have to open my mind here. I have to open my mind in 2022 and I need to start, (laughs) you know, getting into this, these things because they could be things that I really like and I'm not, I'm just not giving them a chance, you know? I know. Still. Yeah. Still. Well, I think we need to do an F Mary kill with the Witcher, Jamie and no, no, Dumbledore. (laughs) Dumbledore. I didn't know who else to do. (laughs) Make it better. Switch Dumbledore out. I I don't know who else there is. F Mary Kill. Okay, okay. Jamie from Outlander, right? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah. Oh, Jamie Alexander Malcolm McKenzie. (laughs) 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 Okay. You um, don't don't have to do this if you don't want to. No, I want to. Okay. And then The Witcher. And then, man, what's another, like, hot, hot, hot fantasy character? Ooh, that you guys would know. Oh, I wouldn't know. I don't know who. I didn't watch Outlander either. What? Nope. (laughs) That's not as fantasy, though, right? Like, that's. It's like time travel romance. What about, like, historical fiction? (laughs) Edward or Jacob? Ew. Oh my god. <laughs> Instant kill. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um Oh, but Twilight damn. Sci-Fi. We gotta Twilight's get to the topic fantasy. eventually here. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well <clears throat> I would marry Jamie. Absolutely. Yeah. And I would F 
the Witcher, so I'd kill whoever else. Yeah, so, so it doesn't matter. I'd they, order Jacob. Yeah, I would not want to be with the Witcher like long term, but would I enjoy the ride momentarily? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I knew you were going to marry Jamie. I knew it. Like that was always going to be it. So anyway, okay. <sighs> Topic. All right. Now that we uh, got that all out of, our, out of our system. So let's talk about times we've given bad plant <laughs> advice. How do we want to do this? Do we want to just go back and forth? Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, I'll start. Because <laughs> <laughs> I probably have the most out of all of you guys. Tell but... us all your mistakes. Oh, dear. <laughs> well, if you're new to my YouTube channel, don't go back the past two years. Okay? Okay. <laughs> I used to tell people to top their well this is what i used to do and it worked for me really well until it didn't (laughs) (laughs) Mm -hmm. i used to top my plants with sand because it really really helped with fungus gnats like i mean that was like the least amount of fungus gnats i ever had so if you're looking for a quick fix to get rid of fungus gnats top your plants with sand but then just know that in about a year or two if that plant's in the same pot your entire pot is going to be filled with sand like I'm talking all the way to the bottom and it's not good for the root system either because it really gets like far down in there a lot of people were telling me actually when I was doing this they were like well why don't you just bottom water but I never bottom water because it's just so it's impractical for me like to just fill a tub with water and and bottom i just don't i never did it so when you're watering from the top which i think is a better way to water which might be controversial but (laughs) not controversial (laughs) here (laughs) the sand is gonna it's gonna find its way down in the soil and it's gonna end up suffocating your plant eventually you know if you don't repot it for a couple of years and i found myself doing that mo- more so with cacti and cacti are slower growers for the most part unless you live in the desert um so your chances of you having that cactus in the same pot for a couple of years is that can easily happen yeah so don't top with sand mm. don't do that don't do it. do it don't do that don't, don't do, do that. that. Okay. Uh, okay. That's the that should be the that should be the episode title. Don't do don't, that. Don't do that. <laughs> Sweetie. <laughs> Sweetie. Uh, oh. I feel like the one that I keep thinking about is one we've spoke about before, but rocks or old pot shards in the bottom of your pot for drainage. Mm-hmm. I yeah. used to tell mm-hmm. people to do that. Oh, um, I know we talked about it with <laughs> Gretchen on our episode with Greenhouse Girl that was recently reposted. But yeah. um, I just want to say, which, do you think I should explain why or you think most people know? Well, just yeah. quickly. Okay. Yeah. So quickly, just going to mansplain. But there are two forces acting when you water a plant. There is gravity, which is flowing the water through the pot. And then there's capillary action, which is an upward force. And that's what you, when you bottom water, that's what you utilize capillary action because it kind of soaks it up from the bottom and fills the rest of the medium. Anyway, there's a point where those two actions meet. One's going down, one's going up. And that's considered the perched water table, which is kind of where like it's stagnant. Like that's a super soaked area of your soil. And it's usually the bottom like two inches of your pot after you water. Well, if you put rocks down there to help with drainage, that soil is moving up closer to the root ball, causing a lot of damage. So rocks in the bottom of a pot are its literally doing what you're trying to prevent to your plant. So just don't do it. Mm-hmm. Don't do it. <laughs> yeah. Don't do that. <laughs> don't, don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> um, one that I can think of is since I've never really given bad plant <laughs> advice. Um, no, I'm joking. Um, no, I. whenever I used to talk about mixing soil, I would just say, oh, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. <laughs> like, here's your ingredients. Put a little bit of this, a little bit of that, and sort of eyeball it every time. And I feel like that's bad advice because how can you know exactly what you put in your mix? Like, how much of each? Right, so then when I was actually making the mixtures with Shota for the De La Tanks mix, 
he had measuring cups and you know even if it meant that he put and basically it was like everything had a ratio right it was like a one to two ratio or a two to three ratio or whatever I never did that I was always like oh just this handful blah 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 and like my soil was fine but it was not very good at the end of the day also my ingredients weren't that high quality so it was also not good in that regard but yeah I never really and I remember people asking me oh what are your ratios and I was like I don't have any just mix it until it feels right yeah yep Mm -hmm. which is just not a good way to teach it's okay if you do that but it's not a good way to teach (laughs) yeah um another one I had is watering your plants with a watering can (laughs) oh yeah yeah Yeah. yeah. because up until i well i mean i guess it's all recent we've only been collecting really for three years but i'd say for a good half of my journey in plant collecting i would water with a watering can and then i stopped doing that and i started bringing my plants to the sink because Okay, I think we talked about this in the last episode or like a recent episode, but when you water your plants, you want to make sure that you're watering them thoroughly. Like the water is flushing out of the bottom drainage hole. Mm -hmm. That can't really happen when you're watering with a watering can unless, you know, you have like a big deep saucer and you're okay letting that water sit in there, which is also not a very good thing because you want to flush it out. But... Um, I started taking my plants to the sink and watering them, you know, thoroughly, but then I would do it with my cactus. Like I would just water my plants with a, my cactus with a watering can. And then I started noticing that like a few of them died from dry rot because they're just not getting enough water. So Mm -hmm. I started taking those to the sink too. So I'm now a huge advocate for flushing your plants in the sink. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good, it's a good practice. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, every time I talk about that, people will be like, oh, but it's still fine just to take them, just to water them in place. And I'm nice and I'm like, okay. But in my mind, I'm also thinking, how is that plant getting any significant amount of water? Because I pour just a little bit of water in my pots and the saucer is overflowing. So unless you're willing to sit there with a turkey baster... (laughs) <laughs> well like also i think like, it's probably the soil that they're using too like that's how you yeah. know you have good soil if it's if it's running through pretty yeah. quickly then you got some nice chunky soil yeah that's uh, yeah it could also depend on your soil that's true mm-hmm. yeah i just never understood why people still water in place like i big plants sure but yeah, yeah, like I, I feel like there's a time and a place. Like there are definitely times where I've watered in place. Like I do still have some plants in soil. And like when I was getting ready for vacation and trying to take care mm-hmm. of all my plants before I left, I would take just a watering can and water the ones that are in soil like in their place just to give them a little boost. But mm-hmm. so I could see like in between, like if you took it to the sink like the first week and then the second week you gave it a little drink with the watering can and then the yeah. third week you went back to the sink like that's okay but like mm-hmm. solely just doing the watering can i just feel like yeah i don't know it's not gonna mm-hmm. be the best it's not a long-term solution no. yeah um but it's kind of funny to me because you you always like run into people who have like this Like, for example, this, like, huge, beautiful fiddle leaf fig. And they're like, oh, I just throw a glass of water on it every other week. Yeah. And I'm like, well, how the hell is it alive? Yeah. (laughs) But I think plants adjust, maybe, some of them. (laughs) Yeah. I guess. That's the crazy thing about plants is, like, some people literally have experiences like that. And it's hard to be like, but you're wrong. Because are they? The plant's fine. So I'm like... You right. know, it's like so hard to be like, no, you're actually, no. <laughs> That's incorrect. Uh, but who the, who the hell knows what ficus really want in life, you know? Yeah, honestly, I'm still figuring that out. <laughs> okay, so another time I've given really terrible plant advice. I used to like neem oil, pest, pest, pest mm-hmm. issues. I used to be like, you spray it with neem oil. I do not, I don't know. I don't know if I, I'm not saying it's bad. I just, it wouldn't be something that I would tell someone to do if, if they had an active infestation. I wouldn't be like, use neem oil. Like, no, that's, I don't feel like that's going to do the trick. Mm-hmm. Right. And yeah, yeah, we've talked about that before too, but neem oil, like it's, it's nice, but that's like a widely used thing. Like everyone's just always like, yeah, spray it with neem oil. Mm-hmm. I can't even let the stuff in my house. 
I could smell it a mile away. It makes me <gasps> so nauseous. I don't know yeah. what's in it that that makes it gives it that smell. It's awful. It's really bad. I I didn't think it smelled that bad, and then I had to use it on a larger scale, and I was like, "What the hell? This is so bad." <laughs> oh, I want to give rather, it a zero. Yeah, I'd rather throw the plan away. But I can't do that, so I'll give you a one. A one. <laughs> Well, that's a good TikTok idea with neem oil. Um, (laughs) Yeah, my next one is along the same lines, if you're done. Yes, I am. Um, I gave the advice to treat all of your plants once a year for pests, um, as if the pests (laughs) just are on a schedule and they'll show up on December 31st and say, all right, we're ready to be eradicated. (laughs) It's that time. It's that time of year. I guess we'll pack up our bags. um, See, I don't think that having a regularly scheduled deep plant clean is a bad thing. Like maybe every quarter you really wipe down all the leaves, but that's not going to prevent pests from showing up between and in my mind, I, that's what I was doing. I was like, once a year, I put them all in the bathtub and I spray them down with insecticidal soap and neem oil. And that's going to keep pests away all year long. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Wrong. Yeah. So yeah. And I remember like giving that. Somebody was like, what do you do at the end of the year? And I was like, oh, I'll make a video. So <laughs> embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Don't do that. Yeah. I apologize if my audio is fudged this week because it keeps trying to connect. Hello? Hello? Okay. All right. (laughs) Sorry. Ready to connect another device. Honestly, I feel like I could be one of those people. You could. You could. <laughs> that was good, right? That was good. That was good. <laughs> yeah, Thank I, you. For a moment, I if I wasn't looking at the screen, I was like, uh, no, Bones. This is my, this is, this is it's my already device. connected. <laughs> wow, honestly, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Nicole, slap on another piece of bad advice. Oh, wait, we, oh. we, we forgot to say. Don't do that. Don't, Don't do, do that. that. Don't do well, that. I said it. I said it as my AirPod went flying out of my ear, but oh, that's okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, oh, you know, okay. This is another thing I went half of my plant collecting doing is not having enough light for my plants and also saying, you don't need grow lights. Like who needs grow lights? <laughs> I think that you can have, like, if you're just starting out collecting plants, I think if you have a great window in your house and you have a few plants that you could put in it and you get sun year round, go to town. But if you live where we live, (laughs) well, two of us in the Midwest, the winter time, like those three, four, sometimes five months of darkness, (laughs) uh, it just really is not doing your plants any justice. It was a mm-hmm. huge game changer when I got my grow lights and it was the cheapest investment I probably could have made for my collection. Mm-hmm. Considering how much money plants cost now, <laughs> if you're just mm-hmm. getting started and you're building your collection, it's definitely an investment that's worth the purchase. We'll link it in the show notes, the lights that we all use if you're interested in checking them out. But... um yeah don't do that don't tell people they don't need grow lights let them make that call for themselves and and actually Mm -hmm. advise it (laughs) yeah yeah i've seen people like amanda ray right she has grow lights all over her house just blended in and they look so nice it doesn't but i feel like people avoid grow lights me in particular because we have this idea of them being like these marijuana grow lights you know like in a basement and they don't have to be like that yeah, it's exactly. It's like that purple light we tested like I, back in the day, Becca. So bad. Oh my gosh. Horrible. So bad. <laughs> I tried so hard to get out of that, but they were like, no, still post it. But we just want your honest opinion. And I was like, yeah. I didn't like the light in the video. I was like, I don't like this light. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Um, I feel like the majority of the time since we're just like an online thing, people just like go on Amazon. They're like, grow light. And all that comes up are those clip on ones that are like blue mm-hmm. and pink. And you know what? If you like that, that's fine. I just really, I can't, I can't do that. That color, mm-hmm. it hurts my eyes. I can't like be Me in too. a room. Um, mm-hmm. So yes, there are so many options for grow lights. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
Yep, just screw them in a lamp that you already have. Yeah. Well, yes. the lamp has to have, have like a pointy feature, but you know. Yeah, <laughs> but you know. You know, those lights that Amanda Ray Wright uses that you probably saw in her stories, maybe we'll link those in the show notes too. Are, because are those the were. Soltec lights? There's the sa- Sansi bulbs. I, I use oh, that too. Okay. Yeah, do you? Okay, mm-hmm. those are so. I think I'm going to get a couple of those because they're very yeah. inexpensive. Oh, they're so cheap. I so have been um, really nice. I have a GE grow bulb in mine that I got at Target because mm-hmm. they were like discounted one time and I bought a bunch. And mm-hmm. I put them in like an IKEA clip-on lamp and it just clipped mm-hmm. onto my shelves. But I will say that those GE grow bulbs are so heavy that like the lamp is one of those mm-hmm. like Pixar type lamps mm-hmm. and it never yeah. stays where I want it to because of the light bulb's so heavy it kind of always just droops. Oh. Um, but yeah. So That's maybe check time. out product weight when you're looking for products because like yeah. Yeah. the GE ones are very heavy. Yeah. The Sansi one is pretty bulky too, but also you don't ne- you don't technically need to have an actual grow light, right? You just need to have a, a light bulb with certain wattage. Mm-hmm. Isn't that correct? I'm not correct? sure what that wattage is though. I always forget. I always refer back to this one specific Betsy Begonia video where she said it. <sighs> Anytime mm-hmm. somebody asks, I'm like, watch this video. She says, the answer is in this video. I don't remember. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Every time. <laughs> Maybe we'll, we'll link to that in the show. Notes. Well, she also did. I was going to say it earlier, but she, she recently did. recently updated. Uh, she did a really uh, good episode on perched water table, which is what I was talking about with the rocks uh-huh. and the mm-hmm. bottom of your pot. It yeah. was a really well thought out and like well de- delivered video. So, yeah. I shy away from like instruction videos. Or, like, giving mm-hmm. advice, I think, because I did it early on and I was just, like, and because of what we're doing now, like, we were wrong. And I think I just need mm-hmm. to give, I need to just be, like, look, you learned, so that's what we're all, I never, like, none of us have said we were experts. We're just kind of mm-hmm. all learning along the way and telling what we're doing and not saying, like, this is what you have to do. Right, so right. So maybe I got to get over that. Yeah. yeah. I Yeah, anytime I ever made an instruction video... I was like, I'm not claiming to be an expert. Like, please. But sometimes Mm -hmm. even when you do say that, people are like, you really shouldn't be giving advice if you're not uh, blah, 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 degree, blah, blah, blah. And that's just not the space that YouTube is, you know? Like, are there professionals on YouTube? Absolutely. Like, there are literal physicians and dietitians on YouTube who give advice about stuff that they know and they are the people who are most qualified but that's not always going to be the case um you know and especially in medical situations not everybody has the luxury of being able to go to the doctor when something Mm -hmm. happens so it's sometimes it is nice when somebody is a doctor on youtube um and you know not everybody is always going to know the answers or have the resources in person to figure out their plant problems and that's why it's good that people make instructional plant videos even if all of our advice is anecdotal oh mm-hmm. uh, i'm trying to think of another one um hydrogen and... peroxide <laughs> oh for is that yours us. adam oh yeah. but it works for fungus gnats i still kind of sit by that but at the same time i did not realize that it killed like like at the very beginning i didn't realize that it like basically sterilized your soil which is not a good thing yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. I that that counts. That's that's good. That's that's good one, Adam. Elaborate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, when you have an active fungus gnat infestation, which you can always tell because either you walk by that plant or you water it, and you just see them, just like. <laughs> that's mm, yeah. what a fungus gnat sounds like. Uh, <laughs> I. I started to like when I when I started and was like having so much fungus gnat issues. I. I don't even know if I mixed it. I think I probably did half water, half hydrogen peroxide. Is that the mixture you did? did? Okay. Yeah. And just watered your plants with it, and it kind of bubbled up the soil a little bit. It was a little. It was fun to watch, but it basically like will kill fungus gnats, like larvae, eggs, all of it. It kills them, but it also, like Becca said, kills all of the good stuff in your soil that you need in there, like the microorganisms that exist in good soil. And you know, if you have a mushroom in your soil, like. I always get with my De La Tank soil, and I'm just like, oh, look at this soil. Just like it being the best microorganism ever. Uh, Yay. That's yeah. a good thing. But yeah, you with hydrogen peroxide, you basically kill everything good and bad. So mm-hmm. that's mm-hmm. that's a no-no. 
So true. Yeah. Okay, but I do have a question because I tried diatomaceous earth instead. How the freak do you use it? Have I asked this before on the podcast? Like, because when I just spritz it on top of the soil, the fungus gnats are like crawling through it. I'm like, are they bionic? Have they grown yeah. armor? You, I think well, you honestly need to put quite a bit. Yeah, like almost a like layer. Nicole did with sand on top of hers, like that. But then sometimes <laughs> I kind of like take a little chopstick and swirl it, like in the first like top layer of the soil. But I have heard people talk about diatomaceous earth and how it doesn't necessarily work for fungus gnats specifically because mm. they're freaks of nature and they can like get through the tiniest mm-hmm. places. Um, but then you'd think the same thing about mealies and spider mites because those are microscopic too, you know? So I don't know. I've never used it for those type of pests. I just use diatomaceous earth when bringing a plant inside that's been outside because mm-hmm. I'm worried about like bigger insects like spiders or centipedes, stuff like that. Okay. But you have to, you have to sprinkle it on top pretty thick, like Adam said, because it needs to like really get on them fully and break down their exoskeleton it's so gross to think about how it kills them slice 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 (laughs) slice slice slice. yeah yeah actually i just had a memory there's worms growing or living inside of my cactus boxes still really Mm. i feel bad for them that cactus soil is probably dry by now like should i water it (laughs) for the worms (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> no, it'll be fine. It'll snow and then it'll yeah. melt on it, right? Are are they inside? They're inside. Oh. Worms are not a bad thing, though. I mean, yeah. Oh, it's no, like you I'm, don't want I'm them... glad they're there. You know, whatever. You don't want them... Yeah, you don't want them in your house. Or like it's... when you repot. I don't know. Some <laughs> it's just funny to hear Nicole be like, fan, but... they're just not that big of a deal. But you know damn well if she saw a worm <laughs> sticking out of her pot, she would be like, burn the <laughs> fucking house down. <laughs> Absolutely. And I was like, oh, cute. What are you guys up to? And every time I see a spider, I'm like, hey, can I get you anything? <laughs> Not me. Set that bitch on fire. Oh, my gosh. Wait, how did. Wait, Adam, you don't like spiders either, do you? I don't mind them. Yeah. Okay. No. Okay. I don't have an okay. issue with spiders. For some reason, I thought you were really. You don't. You don't like snakes. That's oh, what it I'm is. I'm terrified of snakes. Yeah. I feel like most people yeah. are. I don't fuck with snakes. <laughs> I don't fuck with no. you. Oh okay. dear. What do we think? Is that was that good enough? That was a good amount of bad advice that we've given in our day. <laughs> that was a lot that of bad some... advice. Man. Yeah. yeah. I just so feel don't like... do any of that. Oh, go ahead, sorry. <laughs> don't do that. I just feel like there's definitely more. I feel like I should look through just Ah, <laughs> uh, I don't know if I've been that honest well i have been honest but i just don't know if i've really done it it would be fun to to ask people to go back and watch our old videos and then oh. to then to dm us roasting us about our could we handle that mentally no. i mean no. mentally i don't think at the winter i'm in a spot to handle that <laughs> pick the sunniest week of the summer and then maybe <laughs> okay so don't do that either oh, i'm joking gosh. Um, I had a pretty bad plant DIY, but that's all I can see right now. <laughs> Scroll. Ooh, one, I mean, I know one? that there's so much, but it's all right. This is enough. This is this will suffice. This yeah, will but... get those new those. Oh, go ahead. I was just gonna say I want to hear what our listeners have to say too about like what. Oh, because I know advice? we've all given plant like not. You don't have to be on YouTube to give bad oh, plant yeah, advice. No. So mm, yeah, yeah. What have you, maybe you've learned something by watching YouTube and you have been a plant collector for a long time. Maybe you've told friends certain things and you've come to realize that that's a big oh no, no, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Leave it on our latest post, the post that's up today on Instagram over at potted together and let us know what bad plant advice you've given. You yeah. can roast us too if you want. Yeah, it's fine. We could, um, we could actually it. only roast Nicole and Adam. I don't consent <laughs> to. Be- <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> I'm joking. Um, uh, that's. I okay. hope someone brings up the pothos and joy. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> that wasn't necessarily bad plant advice, though. I honestly think uh, I would have done the same thing. I would have too. I would have too. 
That was such a that, horrible situation. You know what I should have done? I should have just given it a really freaking big pot and never tried to separate it. That's yeah. all. But I mean, that was a huge plant, though. That was so big. That plant that would have been a huge pot. It was like definitely um, not treated well. That mm-hmm. was so yeah. bad. So it was so, so root bound that yeah. you would have definitely had to have tore up the roots regardless yeah. of potting it. You have to cut them up or something. Yeah, it was a lot. There was a lot of rot too, if I remember. The pothos mm-hmm. enjoy. It. Gosh, I hate myself for that one. Why did no. I even do that? I'm sorry. Stop. Like I feel like I bring it up all the time, but I it truly just gave me a big <laughs> laugh okay. because I was with you. I was like, yeah, do what you're doing. But the, the funniest part is like a few weeks later, and you're like, it's all dead. <laughs> yeah. All of it died. It's great. Um, <laughs> there was so many people who were so mean to me. And maybe they weren't actually that mean, but oh. it was like my first time getting mean comments and it felt like so horrible. But they were like, you killed it. I'm like, no. <laughs> it's going to die no matter what. Yeah. At least well, you I'm sure to link that video in the show notes in case you don't know what we're talking about. Yeah. I don't, Adam, I don't mind you bringing it up. It's okay. okay. We've, we've got our past. <laughs> we've all had our time. Uh, <laughs> we all have embarrassing videos. What can I say? Oh, we do. Well, yeah. I, I should do, do a reaction video reacting to my biggest plant fail. Oh, yeah. That should be that. Sh- we should we should do a part two of that of like us reacting to an older video. That oh. would that would be a fun. People loved that video yeah, of us did. reacting to our first videos yeah all right oh, all right guys let's uh let's wrap it up shall we because we've been recording for an hour and four minutes and 59 seconds <laughs> Second. here we go all right guys thanks so much for joining us in today's show if uh you liked it be sure to give us a five-star review anywhere you where you could leave a review i think now it's spotify and apple podcasts yeah. so be sure to head over there and and do that and don't forget to follow us we are all on instagram at my clean leaves becca's at de La plants and adam is at not dude k-n-o-t and then we're all on inst i mean uh youtube too also Same and then names. you can also <laughs> and then we can also follow us over at potted together on instagram again leave us some comments today about your bad plant advice because we're very curious and then go watch our latest uh youtube video over Mm -hmm. on youtube we should have one we'll have another one coming up in a few weeks as well yeah we will yeah we will here we go also (laughs) all right guys also thanks so much oh oh, if you have any questions don't forget you can email us at potted together podcast at gmail dot com yes i mm. forgot about that we haven't gotten any questions in a while so definitely reach out on october 28 2021 there was a review on apple Podcasts that says i've tried listening to three different episodes and 80 percent of what i've heard is just them chatting about random stuff <laughs> <laughs> welcome to the show uh, welcome <laughs> sorry <laughs> also though like there Flashback was that to re- the p there- <laughs> Oh, from, what? What? from last episode from the road trip peeing <laughs> oh they would have they would have hated that episode uh, yeah Sorry but then there was another was. one that was that was like forget titanic i'm here for the catch-ups or something like that and i was cracking up put titanic oh. to the side i'm here for the catch-up five stars only <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. that's amazing yeah we got 4.7 out of five wow that's great. We're doing great. Pat on our backs for making the people happy, you know? That's right. Yeah. Yeah. All right, guys. We'll see you. We'll see you next week. Okay. Bye. 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 Gear Patrol calls their new dive watch the best sub $500 dive watch, full stop. Men's Health rated them as the most stylish solar watch in the game. Who are we talking about? It's movement. They're leveling up your gift giving with the sleekest watches you can buy and the biggest deals of the season. From their innovative ceramic materials to sexy automatic divers, 
From ultra-thin dress watches to solar-powered statement pieces and everything in between, Movement is making sure you're the good gifter this year for your family, your friends, or for yourself. And now you can take advantage of 30 to 50% off Movement's California clean watches, jewelry, and accessories to get them a gift they'll never forget. With fast free shipping and returns and amazing bang for your buck, Movement makes for a relaxed shopping experience. And with one-size-fits-all watches, it's an easy, elegant gifting experience too. Shop 30 to 50% off now at MVMT.com. That's MVMT.com.